Bersalam, Wawad, Wafas Kedus, Ahadu Amlak, Amin. Bersalam, Wawad, Wafas Kedus, Ahadu Amlak, Amin. Together, in the name of the Father, say it all with me. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, one God, Amin. His Grace Archbishop Abu Dimitros, Reverend Father and Teacher the Kekaina Tapahana Maya, Priests, Deacons, Brothers and Sisters, and Demanadara Chu, Melkam Hadi Sanis Lola Chu, Brothers and Sisters again in English, since this is an English sermon, how are we on this blessed Sunday? Are we awake? How are we on this blessed Sunday? Good? Just good? Can we say good thanks to God? Let's try it again. How are we on this blessed Sunday? How are we on this joyous Sunday? How are we on this wonderful Sunday? That's good to hear from everybody. So, what I want to teach you guys in this sermon is nothing new. It's nothing that you've never heard before. My sermon today is about prayer. Now I know what you guys are all thinking. Diakon Johannes, why are you teaching about prayer? We pray every day. We know all about prayer. But I'm here to remind you that prayer, you may be doing it wrong. And I just want to be here to remind you. The true, my true intention is hoping that you guys go home today and find the true meaning in prayer. Find your meaning in your prayer. So, let me ask you guys this easy question, and I want you guys to interact with me. The faster we do this, the faster we can sing this mesmer after, and then final benediction, and then we can go eat. How about that? Can we all give me at least 20 to 25 minutes? Is that okay with everybody? Okay, so let me start with an easy question, and I want the boys and the girls to answer. What is prayer? What is prayer to you? So I'm gonna go with the boys. Come here. What's your name? Diakon Gav, Diakon Makbel. So what is prayer to you? Thanking God. Wow, he says prayers, thanking God. Can we give him a round of applause? Okay, from the girl's side, what is prayer to you? One person, come. What's your name? Ruth. Ruth. Okay, what is prayer to you? Uh, prayer means to me thanking God and uh, asking God for, for forgiveness. She said thanking God and asking God for forgiveness. All of them are right answers. So, prayer is like they said, is thanking God and asking God for forgiveness. But prayer is when you're in communion with God and you worship Him. What do I mean by communion? Do I mean holy communion? Am I talking about Kutus Korban? Right? Communion is the sharing and exchanging of heartfelt thoughts and feelings on a spiritual level. Exchanging heartfelt thoughts and feelings. This is also when you lay yourself out to God when you pray. In a sense, how I think about it, you're surrendering yourself to God. So, let me ask everybody a question, and I just want you to raise your hand. Who here has cried while praying? Who has cried while praying? Okay? Crying when you're praying is an example of exchanging those heartfelt thoughts, because you're meaning what you're saying in your prayer. If you've ever cried before, you know it, it truly means something to you, right? So now when you're crying, I'll put it, these, these are heartfelt thoughts that you're exchanging to God. You are communing with, communicating with Him on a deeper level, having that heartfelt conversation. Our objective is to be standing in front of God, enjoying and spending our time with Him. Now, can anybody tell me an instance when we're standing in front of God, and enjoying our time with Him, spending our time with Him, giving our attention to Him. You've all started it this morning. It starts with a K, ends with Dasi. Can we all say it together? One, two, three. 
Gaddafi. During Gaddafi, we're all standing in front of God. We're all giving him our attention. We're all giving him our praise, our worship. Now, Saint Isaac the Syrian, he talks about the same thing. He talks about praying with the heart. He says, a prayer with such requires completely focused mind. So that's when you're giving your attention to God. And when you pray to God, you're giving him your completely focused mind and your undivided attention. Now, I want to know how many people here has a prayer room or it's elevate. How many people here have this elevate? Wow, a lot of people actually. That's good. So when you're in your prayer room, you're putting yourself in a room where you're able to give God your undivided attention. For me, here in Ontario, my dad has a prayer shed, but it's still a prayer room. It's a little bit where he prays. In Calgary, like most of you guys, it's probably your bedroom, which is mine as well. But I still am able to give God my undivided attention because no matter where you are, there's always a place to pray. It doesn't matter if you're on the bus, on the TTC, on the train, on the sidewalk, you can always pray anywhere at any time. The Gospel of Mark says the same thing. Saint Mark wrote in his Gospel, he said, you shall love the Lord your God with all your heart, all your soul, with all your mind and all your strength. This is the first commandment. I'm gonna say it again. You shall love the Lord with, your, with all your heart, your soul, with all your mind and all your strength. This is the first commandment. So not only did Saint Syrian say this, but also Mark said this in Mark chapter 12, verse 30. Now, I want to emphasize with you guys because we all make this mistake and I'm guilty of it too. Praying is not the same as reciting. We pray so often that we get so complacent. Do we all know what the word complacent means? I know it's a big word. Complacent is when you do something so many times, you just know how to do it. For example, all the adults who drive, when you drive, you don't think about staying in the lane, you just do it, right? For all the kids and everybody who eats, when we eat, we don't think about chewing. We also don't think about we're talking at the same time and chewing and then we bite our tongue. It's the same thing. We don't think about these things. We forget the meaning of the words that are coming out of our mouth. So let me give you guys two scenarios. I'm gonna trick you, but I want you to listen carefully, okay? I'll give you guys two scenarios, okay? The first one. Second, our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be your name, your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Can anybody tell me the two differences? Come here. What's your name? Well, so what are, two, what are the differences that you heard in those two scenarios I gave? You were acting like you already know it and but the second one, like you, like you were meaning it, but the first one, it didn't look like you were meaning it. Wow, on point, exactly. Even though I said the second one in English, the first one, did it seem like I meant it? I was just saying it, I was just reciting it. This is the mistake that most of us make sometimes because we pray so much, we forget that what's coming out of our words, we should be meaning it, especially when it comes to God, right? And I know, I know how to pray the Lord's Prayer three different ways, and Amarinyang is in English. But which one do you think I pick? I pick English because why it's my mother tongue, I understand it more. So, I have a question. For all the parents who came from Ethiopia, right? Your mother tongue is Amarinya, or another language in Ethiopia, but still, you all know the Kadazi in Amarinya and Ge'ez. But for us kids who are born here in Canada, US, North America, we're more exposed to English here because of schools, because of, I don't know, our friends, Right? Public places, we all speak English. 
right? And the only time we sometimes, for most of us kids here, the only time we hear our mother tongue are when you guys are watching your YouTube videos, EOT, like EOTV or something, or when you're at home. But at church, the kids should also hear the Kadasi in English. Parents, I want to ask you guys, how did you feel today? Today's English Kadasi compared to your, the regular Sundays when we're saying, when the priests or the deacons are reciting in Amarinya. How did you feel today? I bet that you felt like you didn't understand as much as you did because it, was in a, it wasn't in Amarinya, right? Because it isn't your first language, maybe. But how do you think your kids feel when we are doing Kadasi in Amarinya and Gehiz, right? They feel, you guys feel, you guys are starting to feel the exact same way that we feel as kids because we too need to understand, right? And the moment we start doing English Kadasi, we're starting to understand. That's why we have English Kadasi for you guys, the kids, so you understand what we're doing, what the meaning is to everything that we're saying. His grace, Abu Dimitros, English is not his first language, yet today you heard him read in English. <laughs> and that goes. Yeah, let's give a round of applause. Abuel Dimitros has been where I've been there since the beginning, since he was practicing English. He would ask me how I would say words in English. But what's great is that he's showing his support and he reads to us in English for us kids so that you can understand. He puts in the effort to read what he's saying in English so that next time when he's saying it in Amarinya, you already know what he said in English, right? The more we do English Kadasi, the more we start to understand. So, how can we spread the word of God when people don't understand what we are saying? When there's a language barrier, right? The youth is the future of the church. How do you expect us youth to take over when the things, when the things that we do in church are not translated or we don't understand the language as much as Amarinya, right? And it's not the language that we're mostly exposed to, I'm not even, right? The apostles taught others around the world in a language that others can understand. But we don't have the power of the Holy Spirit that was granted upon us. But what we can do is help our kids and support them every time we come for English Kadazi, right? It's important to keep our youth engaged and involved. Because the church, because a church without a youth is a church without a future. My point is here, is that prayer has no meaning when you don't know what you're saying, when you don't really mean the words that are coming out of your mouth. If you don't mean your prayers, then you are just blindly reciting. You are just blindly reciting. Today, we held a baptism in English for Fikrta Mikhail, and I'm telling you guys, I hope that one day you guys keep, a, you attend a baptism service in English. Because in the last 21 years of my life being here, I've never heard Kristen not in full English. And I've been here for a while. And for me to hear it, I understood more today than I would in 21 years. And it's so important that we keep, we continue this English, the English translations for the kids so that they understand. And it's also a beautiful service. So, let me move on a bit. I'll move a little bit faster. But interact with me here. Another question for the kids. What are some things that we say in our prayers? What are some things that we pray for? Can you guys think of some things that we pray for? The girls will get more questions because they're not raising their hands. Let's go with here. Yaakon. What are some things that you pray for? Forgiveness. Forgiveness? Okay. Now, girls, I have to hear two from you. Okay, all the girls are staring. They're like wondering, what do I say? <laughs> what are some things you pray for? Uh, confess. Confession. Confession. Wow. Another one. I need one more from you guys. If you guys want to eat, you got to hurry this up. One more. Ruth, let's go. Oh, new one. Kick me. Kick me.
Shelter. Shelter. Now, these are all great things. Thank you. These are all great things that we should pray for. But I want to remind you guys, of all, like all of you guys, of the importance of prayer. Prayer is not all just about asking God for something. Prayer is not asking for materialistic things. You guys know what materialistic things are? Physical things, right? When you're praying, you don't pray for the new iPhone 16. When you're praying, you don't pray for new toys. When you're praying, especially parents, I know you guys will do all this. Some of you do this. When you're praying, you don't ask God to win the lottery. All right, I know some of you do it, and you guys are guilty of it. Now let me tell you, I want to tell you guys something really important. God is not Santa Claus. God is not Santa Claus. Santa Claus is not real. He is not real. God is the only person that can give you something that would mean something in your life. Santa Claus will probably break, give you something that would break, and he's not real. He's not fake. Santa Claus is Satan, but that's another topic for someone to discuss. But come Judgment Day, do you think winning the lottery and all that money that you have will mean something? You think you could go on Judgment Day and tell God, Oh God, sorry, I've been doing so bad in my life. Here's $50,000 cash. It doesn't work that way. Money has no value in heaven. Materialistic things have no value in heaven. But you know what does have value in heaven? Our prayers, our connection with God has value. Right? When you're asking for something in your prayers, you're asking the Lord for help. You're asking the Lord for guidance. We often always ask the Lord, we always keep asking whatever, oh, I need, Lord, I need this, I need that, I need this, I need this, I need, me, need, need. We always ask, 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 yet we also forget to thank God for what He's given us, right? So, thank God for everything that He's given us and pray for those who don't have what we have. Right? Some of you kids said shelter. Right? Some kids don't have shelter, but you have shelter. You take things for granted. I know some of you kids take things for granted. Food on the table, you start becoming picky about what you eat. Right? But some kids don't have food. Some kids don't have parents to cook food for them. We should be grateful of these things. Parents, we should be happy that we have kids. Some of our kids keep us grounded, but they also give us happiness. There is, sometimes they can give us a little bit of a headache, I know that. But, these are your kids, right? And they are the future. If you want them to take over the church, you have to take care of them as well. And it's also your duty to teach them. It's also important, right? That's why there's us deacons here to also teach this, right? We may be deacons, I may be younger than some of you, but, maybe a little bit wiser, but it's, <laughs> But it's important because I too have stuff to learn and you too have stuff to learn. Everybody has something to learn. No matter how old we get, there's always something new. There's always something that we can improve on because why we all make mistakes. Now, I just wanna make sure everyone's following. Is everyone still awake? Everyone's still here with me? Okay. So, to the next part, prayer makes you know who you are. Let me repeat that again. Prayer makes you know who you are. It helps reflect on your, it helps you reflect on yourself. It brings forth, now bear with me, this is a lot of heavy words, right? Prayer brings forth a spirit of humility, a contrite heart. Does that sound confusing? I know for the parents who don't understand English as much, it sounds confusing already, but I'll try to elaborate. Prayer. In a sense, prayer helps us recognize our sinfulness and brokenness. We are all broken. Can we all acknowledge that? We are all sinful and we are all broken. Nobody here is perfect. And I'm sure Messi has taught you guys well. Messi has said that you guys, nobody is perfect. You are not perfect. 
some of you cry and all that, but myself included, I may be a deacon, but I'm not perfect. I too am broken. We are all broken, right? And we all make mistakes. No one who walked on earth is perfect other than our Lord Jesus Christ. But that's why as Orthodox Christians, we pray and we try to live that Christ-like life, that perfect life that He lived. There's always going to be struggle in our life. Are we going to live a perfect life like Him? No. Right? And that's the thing. With life comes struggle, but we can always try to live a perfect life or at least work towards it. Along the way, we need help and most of us forget that God is always there to help us all. Some of us look to our mommies, daddies, some of us look to our friends, but we always forget the one who is always there with us by our side. We always forget about God, right? He's always there and when we ask God for help, we pray. Are you guys still awake? <laughs> so, I want to share with you guys a story and I really hope this resonates with you guys. Who here has been sick, severely sick, had a fever, right? I'm sure all of us have been sick. We all, there was the COVID pandemic a while ago. You all have experienced it. So, when I used to live with my parents, I was severely sick. I lived in the basement where it's so cold. But I'm good, no, it's so cold there. There's a vent going, blowing down my face. So I'm always getting sick. I'm always getting cold. So one day I go upstairs, mom tells me, hey, are you good? And then I'm like, I tell her, I'm like, no, mom, I'm sick, right? I have like tissue up my nose, I can't breathe. I have a very bad fever. I feel my body temperature is hot. I feel cold, my body's shaking. I feel weak, my legs can't even keep me up. She, tells, she says to me, hey, come, come eat something at least. So I ate, I barely ate. Well, you know when you're sick, you don't have an appetite, you can't eat anything. So after that, I finished dinner, 10 o'clock comes around, my mom checks on me. She says, are you good? I'm like, no, I'm just gonna rest. 10 o'clock, 11 o'clock, 12 midnight comes. Everyone's asleep and I'm alone on the couch sleeping. Well, trying to sleep. I can't sleep because my mind wouldn't stop. My body is shaking. My body, my body temperature is hot, I feel cold. My teeth are shivering. I can't do anything. If I try to get up, I'd have to roll on the floor. So at this point, I start crying because I feel helpless. Have you ever felt so helpless before in your life? When you're sick and you feel like you can't do it, right? I couldn't do anything. I couldn't get up. All I could do was move my arms. And instead of turning, turning to my phone, right? Like what most people would do, they would try to make themselves go to sleep. They would turn to their phone. What did I do? I turned to God because it was the first thing I knew, because I know that God, when you struggle, God will help you, right? So, this is what I did. I'm crying, I'm shivering, I can't do anything, I can't move my body, all I can move are my arms. I try to get up to at least sit up to pray, I can't do that either. So, what do I do? I raise my hand to my head, in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit, one God, amen. I'm shivering, I'm crying. Right? I'm shivering and I'm crying, I can't do it. And I said, the first thing I said, I said, God have mercy upon me, a sinner. I said, God have mercy upon me, a sinner. I said, I don't remember much of my prayer because it was a while ago, but I do remember saying, God, I know I am your servant and I have made so many mistakes in my life and that you've been there to see all of them and I can't be as perfect as you. But Lord, please help me. I'm struggling. I told him, I said in my prayer, God, my body feels hot. I can't go to sleep. My, my mind, I, I'm trying to rest him, but he doesn't want to stop, right? And I'm crying, I'm crying, I'm crying. I didn't know what to do. And then I said, eventually my prayers, I said, Lord, please help me like you helped the sick man that everybody shunned for his disease. I said, Lord, help me. Heal the man, heal me like you did with the man who couldn't walk for he was able to walk again. Lord, I know I may not be perfect. I said, I said, Lord, please forgive me. I am not perfect and I'm not a perfect servant. I don't feel, I don't feel like I deserve your love. 
sometimes, and I feel like I don't deserve to be your servant, yet you still love me. I said, Lord, please forgive me. And I said, Abu Nazar Samayat. I said it in English because I know I can mean it in English, right? And then what happened after was amazing because I signed the cross still crying, and then a second later, I felt my mind calm down. It went down to my face, my torso, my arms, my legs, and I felt calm, I stopped shaking. I stopped shaking, and my mind felt so calm. My body temperature was no longer hot or cold, it was normal, and I was finally able to rest. I was finally able to sleep. Before I closed my eyes, I said, thank you, Lord, forgive me. Now, that point of my story, and it's a true story, because you can ask my mom, she's probably watching live right now, because my mom, the next, my dad was, oh sorry dad, <laughs> sorry dad, my mom checked up on me the next morning, the next morning, I didn't feel the same symptoms anymore, I wasn't 100%, but I was able to get up, my mom goes, hey Johannes, how are you, and I'm like, good, feeling better. She goes, take your medicine. I'm like, okay, okay, I will. But the point of this is that I want to share with you guys in my experience the true power of meaning your prayer, right? Like as it did for me, you won't under, you may not understand what I'm saying now, but when you give it a try and then you actually experience it yourself, you're gonna be amazed about like how how true and how amazing it is to mean your prayers. Now, I got a little bit sidetracked, but let's get back on track, okay? And I hope that meant something to everybody. I hope that story meant something to everybody. Prayer helps us, recognize our, rec helps us recognizing our sinfulness and brokenness. Prayer is a source of strength and relationship with God. For example, kids, you just started school, right? We all just started school. Did we make new friends? Some of us may have made new friends, some of us not. Parents, when you met your friends, did you know each other? Did you know each other before? Let's say you met someone you knew. How would you go about it? You say, oh, and then and then and then right? You say all that. And as you guys keep talking, your relationship and friendship furthers. It develops, right? It's the same thing when we're praying. When we pray to God, when we pray to God, we're developing our relationship with God. Now, He may not respond like physically, like right next to us, but He's a great listener and He's always listening to us. Sometimes He's a better, most of the time, He's a better listener than our friends. Our friends will tell us lies, right? They'll tell us something you want to hear, but God will show you something you would want to see and you would want to hear, right? So God is a great listener, and He listens to whatever we have to say. He may not respond right away like we have hoped to, but He has a plan for all of us. We just have to be patient. When something goes wrong in life, I want you guys to always remember this, when something goes wrong in life, don't blame anybody, especially never blame God. Never say, He did this to me. When something goes wrong in my life, I take it as an opportunity. Think about it that way. When something goes wrong in your life, take it as an opportunity. For me, I take it as an opportunity to learn, to pray, and to ask for help. Recently, there was a hailstorm in Alberta. My car completely destroyed. My glass shattered. First thing I did when I, come, when I got back from Ontario, I started praying, I'm like, Lord, I don't have the money to pray to, to pay this off, right? And I'm not gonna ask God for money. I ask God for the strength so that I can keep working so I can make that money. I never ask Him for money. I don't ask Him for winning the lottery. I always ask Him for something that's not materialistic, right? So when we ask for help or when something goes wrong in our life, use it as an opportunity, ask for help. It's always there. God is always there for all of us. God hears all of our prayers and He's working on fulfilling all of our prayers. There's so many prayers that we could say. We could say Thanksgiving prayers, praise prayers, 
repentance, and also praying for other people. We could pray for other people, right? But the main takeaway, the main thing I want you guys to go home with from my sermon today is that always pray from the heart and mean what you say. Don't just blindly recite the Lord's Prayer. I want you guys to take your time and really mean what you say. I want to leave you guys with an, a, some advice that you guys probably know. Someone you probably really know. Abba Kiros gave me this advice years ago. And I still keep it to me to this day. When we were still young deacons and we would just recite, we would say it too fast. And he pulled us all aside and he goes, guess, guess, take your time. At first, I never understood what he said. One, because I didn't understand Amariya, so I had Aaron or Joseph translate, but I didn't understand what he really meant. When he said, take your time, okay, at first, I just read it slower. But what he really meant, the true intention of that advice is that when you say it slower, you mean what you say. My advice doesn't just, doesn't just go for everyone here, it goes for us deacons as well. When we serve and we recite and we say something, we should always take our time, right? This is the order of our fathers, so that the people can understand what you're saying, and so that you can understand what you're saying to them, okay? With that being said, can we all stand and join me in singing one English mesmer? And after this, Yes. <laughs> Can we all stand to sing one mesmer and then make a good final benediction and we're all going to eat, okay? By the way, you want to say that you have 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 to say No. 